What's going on everybody? I hope you guys are doing well. Today I thought I'm going to bring you something different. But today I want to talk about which streaming service do I think that you guys should be looking at. I get a lot of questions about streaming services. So I thought I'd take my time to have a look and see, kind of break down which ones, what do they do, what are the pros and cons and things like that. So in fifth place, let's talk about Apple. Now firstly, I don't own an iPhone or a MacBook and I probably never will. But Apple's streaming service had a small launch in 2019. And when I mean small, I mean bare bones small. But in 2021 is where it really started to make some strides for me. With high budget sci-fi originals like Invasion, Foundation, and also one of my favorite shows right now called Swagger, basketball show, and the amazing Ted Lasso. With movies also like Finch, and Hayley Steinfeld as the titular poet in Dickinson, The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon, plus Jason Momoa. It all sounds nice, doesn't it? But that's pretty much it. The content is quite bare, but Apple TV's library is slowly growing and I expect them to keep adding to it this year. The individual plan also is what the problem is. It's very expensive, it's $14.95 a month, and the family plan is $19.95 a month. And they have a premier plan, which is £30 a month. So Apple has cut the price of Apple TV by 30%. It should help, but the competition in that space is really heating up. Are kind of making some good shows and improving, they're actually falling behind because of the cost and everything else. I mean, Paramount Plus is just around the corner. So the reasons to buy this, in my opinion, is... They've got some really high quality, expensive original shows that are just top class um, visual effects. 4K HDR Dolby Atmos functionality. And they have a very nice app experience, which I think is very, very good. High quality stuff. Reasons to avoid? For me, guys, too expensive. And the price discrepancy between Apple TV's 4K is ridiculous shallow catalogue and they've only got a few must watch shows which I've just named out to you guys now. So that's Apple TV. Number four on my list is Now TV. Now think of this as Sky's streaming service with your own monthly subscription fee instead of just paying for a 12 month contract. The default streaming resolution is not great guys, 720p. But for an extra £3 a month, you can get 1080p. I hate when streaming services get you to pay more money for higher quality stuff when it comes to certain packages on 4K. But with Sky, this has been sort of hurting Sky for a long, 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 long time. The way they used to charge you like £10 a month for HD and now they're charging you an extortionate amount of money for 4K. When you think about £10 a month, you can actually get a whole streaming service for that price. Instead, some of these companies just charge you that just for what viewing in higher quality. So I'm not a big fan of that. But you have the ability to stream on three devices rather than two with the 1080p package. But the app experience, guys, is very poor. The programming is obviously top quality, and that's because Sky have got overall deals like HBO and Showtime, things like that. Now, I used this for a bit last year, and it was only because that's where the Snyder Cut Justice League was showing. So I paid for the monthly charge, watched the film on the first day, well, watched the film about three times after that, and then I got rid of it. So it is very flexible in that way. If people don't want to commit to getting cable or, or putting a satellite in the home, this works very easily from a box or from a fire stick, and it's a, it's very, very easy setup, and there's no commitment. So my reasons to buy, guys, is... It has the best TV shows from the US and the UK. Flexibility with monthly passes, I think is really, really good and there's no commitment there. And features live TV from Sky, HBO and Sky Atlantic. So that's really good. Reasons to avoid, the UI is very poor and it's very slow. The new American shows are limited in its time and the streaming resolution of standard is 720p and not 4K. So let's move on to number three. This might surprise a few as well. Number three, I've got Disney Plus. Now, Disney Plus has been around for a while now, a couple of years. 
And it's just now starting to get some decent shows that are worth the price. Which by the way has increased from $5.99 to $7.99 in just a year. For the first year which I paid for the service, I did the famous £49 for 12 months. So it, I only paid about, what, £4, 18 pence a month. So while there wasn't a lot on it, it was kind of okay. But for the first year, the service only had Star Wars and Mandalorian Season 1, and we had to wait a whole year just to get WandaVision. For the rest of the programming, there were older movies, which most of us already have on Blu-ray or DVD. And that's the bad stuff. The good stuff is really good. Disney began introducing Marvel content as part of that MCU package for Disney+. Plus. So take for instance, WandaVision and Winter Soldier carries on straight after Avengers Endgame. And the new Hawkeye series is sort of a part two to the Black Widow movie as well. They also brought back a Defenders Netflix Daredevil character in Kingpin. By, so by the end of the year, Marvel will have 10 shows on the service. And so will Star Wars. And I talked about that in a couple of my reviews. But even bigger is X-Men animated series TV, which we all watched in 1992, that will be coming back for a new series as well. So the series has doubled the amount of content available to stream in 2022. The increased price point of $7.99 a month had to happen, simply because they have to pay for all these new shows. So don't be surprised if the cost will even rise to $8.99 or even $9.99 by the end of this year. So you have a complete 31 season archive of The Simpsons on there too. So the reasons to buy Disney Plus is all of Disney animated classics, Star Wars and Marvel all in one package. The system has a one price tier, so you get 4K with it and now it offers IMAX Ultra 4K in 13 Marvel films. Now it features a pretty adult friendly content service as well in Stars, so you get all the Deadpool and all the serious Walking Dead stuff on there as well. So the reasons to avoid is it needs much more new original content. Also, the sound quality for me is the lowest out of all the services. And it has that horrible slow UI, which they, just, they upgraded it a couple of months ago, but it's still really bad. Sometimes it refreshes and reboots the app just because it just doesn't have enough onboard memory. So that's my number three. Number two is Amazon Prime. Ah, soon to be surpassed by Disney in the next year or two. But for now, it's still holding second place. And I have to say, the worst thing about this service, again, is the app. It's awful. The single monthly fee gets you access to 4K streams, but there's just not much on there. Older US shows like The Office, South Park, and The X-Files, and the new stuff is up there with the best of them. The Boys, Reacher, Stargirl, Hannah, Wheel of Time, The Expanse, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. There's plenty of stuff that's on there that's worth watching from the last few years. But Amazon UK has also been busy acquiring original films for the platform, like Coming to America, To Cinderella, the musical, which is fantastic by the way, the Barat sequel, and the new Lord of the Rings TV series, which the trailer has just come out now from the Super Bowl. So the reasons to buy, guys, is that originals are getting better and better. I, I just finished watching The Wheel of Time, great show, amazing scenery. Loads of great US imports like DC's Stargirl, Jack Ryan, Expanse, to name a few. And it's a part of a £79 a year Amazon Prime membership. And also you get in-depth details on actors while watching the shows. It doesn't offer quite as much original content as Netflix, but in the UK, it's definitely one of the best options around and you get free delivery service from Amazon and you have a choice to pay another $7.99 a month if you want to get the audiobooks with a free book thrown in, which you get to keep. The reasons to avoid is the UI is messy and it's slow. It also encourages you to spend extra. So if you take sort of Sky, for instance, or if you take Netflix and you can have like packages where you have an entire seasons of shows, you can just go and watch them. But on this, some new members don't know that, and they end up having to pay eight, up to £84 for a box set, which they won't know until they get the bill. And that's a, a little bit difficult for some, some people. I know a few people who have got that, they made the mistake and they've just cancelled it because they just thought, you know, this is dodgy. 
So the number one streaming service, in my opinion, is Netflix. Netflix is the daddy of streaming services. It's available worldwide, unlike many other services. And the content available to stream is fantastic. The app experience is the best around. It offers 4K resolution in its highest form. As its most expensive tier, there's plenty to look at, whether it's Russian, European, African, Asian, original shows, it doesn't matter. The content that no other streaming services are doing right now. You know, if you look on Disney and you want to watch African programs, good luck. If you turn on Disney+, Plus, you want to watch Russian shows, or you want to watch Polish action adventures or anything like that, good luck. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. Some of these streaming services like HBO Max are not even available outside of America. Like if you live in Europe, you can't get it. So Netflix UK is actually in better shape than its US counterpart. And that's because, and a lot of Americans don't know this, because shows are being released at the same time now. Unlike five years ago, and most importantly, there are other new services in America like CBS All Access, HBO Max, Hula, things like that. But you have to pay for those extra in the US. But in the UK, they actually come as part of Netflix's package. So rather than having to pay yet for another streaming service, like, say, for instance, Star Trek, DC's Titans, for example, and also the new Peacemaker series, what Netflix does is it buys those series so that you can watch those series on Netflix in the UK. It's a little bit like Stargirl. Stargirl's available to watch on Amazon Prime. So the basic tier is very reasonable, guys. $5.99 a month for standard definition, which you can watch on four devices. Also, they stream in 4K, which is available in the UK for all those four devices. So the reasons to buy for me is so much original content in various different countries all around the world. Offers 4K, and you don't have to sort of break the bank for it. And the app experience is fantastic. Most times you get trailers, um, you get insights, and you have a thumbs up review as well, so you can sort of let everybody know whether the shows are good or bad to watch. The reasons to avoid is some might be put off with the non-brand Netflix name. So what I mean by that is if you want to watch Star Wars, Marvel, or anything Disney, um, all of that stuff's going to be coming off. Most of it has already but the rest of the stuff is going to be coming off Netflix and it's going to be exclusive to all those other services. But this is only making Netflix stronger because they have their own brand of programming. I mean, Rome won an Academy Award, for, you know, and that wasn't by any other company but Netflix. So their stuff is, is having to improve because they're losing a lot of these brand um, sort of programming. Also, yes, there's an additional cost for 4K, but you get 4K Ultra and it's quite a lot because you have Dolby Vision as well. And also the free trial, remember they used to do seven days free trial, that's no longer available. So that's my reasons to avoid. So guys, that's my breakdown of the streaming services and let me know what you guys have got. Let me know what you're thinking about buying and let me know what you're probably trying to get rid of as well. Okay, guys, that's all from me, man. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace out.